Are you looking for the best laser engraver for beginners? Well, you might have found it, but you might not have. You'll find out in this video. Here on my desk is the Orter R1, which is the little brother of the R2, the machine I showed in my previous laser video. And it's a very little brother because besides the name that is R1 and R2, there aren't many similarities between the two machines. In this video, as usual, we'll go through everything. I won't spend much time on the unboxing. This time I'll show you the machine right away. Then I'll tell you what flaws I found with it. And after that, I'll show you how you can work with it and what you can make. So the machine isn't too big. This is what it looks like. The usable area is 10 by 10 centimeters that you can engrave with. And if you want to engrave metal, you have to put in a different engraving head and then the work area you can use becomes 10 by 8 centimeters in size. There's no display screen on the machine itself and there is also no separate operating system included. You need at least a phone or a tablet to use it, but if you ask me, you're definitely better off connecting it to a PC via USB. Then you can use the laser GRBL and Lightburn software programs with it for more advanced control. The most interesting thing about this machine is that it's actually quite small. And don't just think of small as being this size, but imagine it as only half of that. Because this machine can be folded up much like a transformer. Folding it isn't too complicated or difficult. All you have to do is lift this grate, then pull out this plate, and that's it. And then on the back, there's a button that you have to press right here. And once you've pressed the button, you can flip the whole machine over just like this and you'll see that it's already half the size it was originally. Don't mind the head sticking out of it right now. This is the metal engraving head. If the other head is in it, the one for wood engraving, then it doesn't stick out this much and you can fold it completely. But this is where the first problem comes in, which I have to report and which I think is a pretty serious design flaw. You see this metal plate, when you fold the machine like this, you have to slide it in here at the bottom, which is great because there's a space for it. However, it has no function other than just being here. And if this metal plate were meant to be slid in on the other side, so if you could slide it in somewhere up here, then it would protect the inside of the machine. It would protect the mechanics, the head and everything. But as it is, nothing protects it. So when you fold the machine like this and put it in your backpack, you're relying on good luck that the head won't get caught on anything and that nothing will get torn out here. So to put it mildly, it's a dumb solution. Let's just say they really could have perhaps handled this metal plate a bit more cleverly, honestly. In any case, it's not a huge mistake. After all, you'll most likely be using it at home. You'll open it once and then you won't be folding it up and down. You won't be playing transformers with it either. So once we've carefully clicked it back into place and securely put the metal plate in position, the engraving process can essentially begin. As I mentioned earlier, it has a durable metal engraving head, which is specifically designed for this purpose. And as I mentioned before, here's the other head for comparison. You can buy the machine in three configurations, either with this head, which is a five watt standard blue laser, or with that metal engraving head that's in it now, or you can buy it with both heads and swap them out. Swapping them is not too complex. An adapter simply has to be screwed onto the other head and then it can be fitted into place. You just need to connect one cable here. So that's essentially the whole assembly. You can swap the head in about five minutes. As for the machine's exterior, I should also mention that there are no controls on it, nor is there a display. There's a single button here on top that you have to press. When you press it, it turns on. And this LED here indicates the current status, so whether it's working or not, and that it's powered on. You'll find the connectors on the back, and there aren't too many. There's a power input, a USB-A connector, a card reader, a USB-C connector, and the reset button. What's also interesting about the back of this device is that the USB-A connector isn't actually used for what you might typically expect. So you won't be plugging in a standard flash drive here, but instead you'll be using a hardware key. And let's pause here for a moment because I've actually seen hardware keys in my life before. I've worked at a place where one was absolutely needed for more expensive GIS software or for specialized printing software. And it was needed specifically because these are really expensive uh, industrial grade programs. And for these, they don't give you keys like for, say, Windows, where you have to type in a series of numbers or letters. That could be cracked. You could make a key generator for it. And then these expensive programs could be stolen. 
That's why manufacturers usually provide a hardware key with the software, which you have to plug into the USB port. When the software starts, it reads the key, and if everything checks out, you can use the software. So that's what a hardware key is typically used for. With the Ortur, they say the hardware key is so that a child can't use the machine if you don't want them to. My only problem with this is that the hardware key is this tiny little USB stick. And there's only one of them in the package. And since it's so tiny, and since you can take it out of the machine, it's inevitably quite easy to lose. And if you do lose it, I honestly don't know how you're going to use the machine. I strongly suggest that once you've plugged this into the back of this machine, you don't pull it out again. Or if you do, make sure to put it somewhere you're absolutely certain you'll find it. So, it's a bit of a strange solution in this case. I don't really understand the reason for it. Besides this, there are two more things I definitely have to mention that I don't really like about this machine. The first thing is this metal plate, which I was just talking about earlier. You see, this metal plate is the work plate here at the bottom of the machine. This is the area where you place the work pieces. And well, these work plates are typically or usually made with some kind of grid pattern or with some lines or any kind of marking or indicator that helps you to place the work piece very precisely and accurately on the plate. This one has nothing. And the result is that you simply can't place the workpiece precisely on the plate. It'll always be a little crooked, a little off from where it should be, and there's no line to align it with. Of course, I found a workaround, but the only way I could actually do it was by taking a piece of wood, this one here, and carefully burning the positions where I placed the workpieces to be engraved. I taped it to the plate with electrical tape, making sure it was secure, and then I could place the material I wanted to engrave in exactly the right spot and align it properly, ensuring everything was positioned just right. So, as you can see, the problem can actually be solved with just a little bit of ingenuity, but why should you really have to do that? Why couldn't this have been solved at the factory by simply screen printing some kind of helpful grid on it? So, you see, this is just another one of those penny-pinching things, and I honestly don't understand why they couldn't have solved this issue. And besides this, there's actually one more problem, and this one is specifically related to the machine's functions. Because the manufacturer includes two of these triangular prisms with the machine, they also included these with the R2. These are so you can place them under the workpiece, so that when you're cutting the material, the bottom doesn't get burnt. Now, this machine is good for everything except cutting. Physically speaking, with the 5 watt head, you can actually cut through 2 to 3 millimeter plywood quite effectively, and also anything that is thinner and softer than that. But unfortunately, cutting produces smoke because, you know, a laser doesn't cut like scissors, but by burning the material in a very, very thin strip, but it still burns the material. And if you burn material, you get smoke. For example, manufacturers usually solve this by putting a fan in the machine, and on the back, they put a pipe fitting or some solution where you can attach a tube. The fan pushes the smoke out the window through the tube and the problem is solved. With the Orter R1, the manufacturer has only partially solved this particular problem because they have chosen to put a fan inside the machine, specifically on the back panel inside the enclosure. However, if I turn the machine around, you can see that on the other side of the fan, there is actually no connection point at all you can't actually connect a tube here. So if you're going to cut with this machine and there's smoke building up inside, the fan will do a really good job of pushing that smoke right out into your room. So, and just think about it. How great is it really when your room is completely full of smoke? So really, even though you can cut with this machine, even though the 5 watt head is actually fully capable of cutting, even though they include these triangular prisms so the bottom of the material doesn't burn, on one hand it's going to burn anyway because there's no air assist, no air assist to cool the material and prevent burning. Without that air assist, the heat from the laser can easily scorch or char the underside of your workpiece, making it difficult to achieve clean results. And secondly, your apartment will be full of smoke, so you're never in a million years going to cut with this machine, because what you make will be ugly, and your apartment will be full of smoke. So this does restrict the usability of this machine to some extent, which in this case means you'll probably just be doing some engraving with it. I should note, that's not bad either, because you can make really cool things with it. I did do a cutting test so you can see what it's like. This is a three millimeter poplar plywood. Well, you can see it got pretty badly burned. So, 
you can actually cut with it, as you can see, and if you really want to, you can take it out to the terrace or the balcony and you can cut three millimeter sheets with it there and the smoke will dissipate. But in any case, I don't really recommend it for cutting more for engraving. And what did I engrave on? Well, during this test, I mostly tried out harder materials and I was particularly curious about how well I could actually position the materials because of the issues I mentioned, since with this machine, especially with the metal engraving head, you could engrave really cool little gift items, pendants, rings, and other things. And my test was aimed at exactly that. First, I'll show you a steel plate. I already engraved on steel like this in the previous test. A motorcycle then too. And well, since I used the same head then as well, uh, there was basically no problem. But I did it anyway, so that worked out really well. Then as a test, I took a little circular shape, resized it to one centimeter, and I drew this little one centimeter eagle on top of the metal sheet. It might have been a little visible, but it was really just a test to see what power I had to set the laser to in order to get a picture like that on steel normally. Can engrave because the real test was this tiny little pendant, more precisely a small round metal plate on which I engraved the same eagle. So you can see that if you pay attention to the settings, you can really work with it very precisely and very well. And I think this metal engraving thing is a really good thing that has actually been possible so far. This limitation was present on home machines because at that time, almost everyone used blue lasers and blue lasers simply can't engrave metal surfaces very well. So that's actually a really good development since more and more manufacturers are now offering this improved solution. And it's also available as an option on the R1 model if you choose to buy that specific type of laser head. There was also a sweater holder that I tried to engrave. Unfortunately, that project didn't really work out too well for me, mainly because I couldn't quite get the material positioned properly. And as a result, the lettering ended up a little crooked and uneven. But in any case, the material test was good, the engraving was good, the quality was good, so this again turned out really well. Let's summarize then. You can find a more detailed video online about the settings, what do I know about the head settings, what happens with these little gadgets, and things like that. I actually wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about the good things about this machine and of course also about the bad things because no matter how useful that machine is, unfortunately it wasn't perfect either. Lively. With that said, I have no complaints about it because it works really well, it does its job, it is built from very good materials, as beautiful as a laser engraver can be. This one is probably as beautiful as well. The design is absolutely good. The materials are very good. And as I said, there are no problems with the functions either. So if you are looking for a slightly cheaper entry level laser engraver for beginners, then I can definitely recommend the Auteur. You will not be disappointed. Other things are cheap now. The cheapest blue laser head costs 76,000 for ints, which is certainly not a crazy amount of money. The metal engraving head costs over 100,000 for ints. And this package, which includes both heads, is obviously the most expensive option. But as I said, they give you the coupon code for all three configurations, so you will be able to buy it at a relatively affordable price this way. If you like the video, here I have chosen from the other two that appear next to me, so feel free to check them out as well. I will be presenting the Orter R2 in both videos. In the description of this video, you will find the link on YouTube where you can purchase the coupon codes. And you can also find a link to the written test. If you would like to read it, you can do so there. Be good, take care of yourself, subscribe to the channel, and I will be back with another test soon. Until then, bye.